It's July 7th, 2021, in the center of Amsterdam, and one of the most famous Dutch crime journalists, Peter R. de Vries, is leaving RTL Boulevard, a TV studio on Lange Leidse Straat. It's around 7.30 p.m. It's a public area in broad daylight, and Peter R. de Vries is starting to walk towards his car that is parked further up the road. After reaching the parking garage, where his car is located, someone approaches him. Peter R. de Vries is shot and hit in the head. After fighting for multiple days in the hospital, Peter R. de Vries passes away on the 15th of July at 64 years old. The motive still needs to be discovered, but a 21-year-old man, Delano G, is expected to be the shooter and a 35-year-old man, Camille E, is expected to be the getaway driver. The shooter has been linked with the notorious gang leader, Ridouan Tachi, who is currently on trial for suspected involvement with multiple murders, drug trafficking, and leading an organized crime syndicate. Prior to his death, Peter R. de Vries was an advisor to Nabil B, and Nabil B was a former gang member in Tachi's organized crime syndicate who left out of fear and is currently testifying against Tachi. Before de Vries, Nabil B's lawyer, Derek Viersum, was also shot and killed near his home in Amsterdam. If a link is properly established between Peter de Vries' connection with Nabil B and his death, the list of fatalities linked to Tachi's gang will grow. And civilians being shot in residential neighborhoods in broad daylight reflects a fundamental problem with organized crime in Europe. In the EU, there has been a rise in the amount of violence associated with organized crime, and there is an increased willingness for criminal groups to resort to lethal violence. In 2018, Amsterdam's police chief claimed that his force was spending 60 to 70 percent of its time attempting to combat gang-related hit jobs and that young men would carry out contract killings for as little as 3,000 euros. In 2020, police officers discovered in the Netherlands, alongside 24 kilos of ecstasy, baklavas, and various torture devices, shipping containers rigged as prison cells and torture chambers. In Spain, the number of gangs dedicated to drug trafficking has multiplied. In Sweden, with one of the highest levels of fatal shootings already that has been increasing, eight out of 10 shootings were linked to organized crime. And in Belgium, there have been increases in violence attributed to gun battles and grenade attacks linked with trafficking through Antwerp. Cocaine is Europe's second most consumed narcotic, and the market for the drug has been increasing. There are currently unprecedented quantities of cocaine being trafficked to the EU. In fact, Europe is often regarded as having more potential for growth and higher profits in the cocaine market, challenging the market in the US. In Europe, the prices of cocaine are higher and the risks of interdiction, extradition, and seizure of assets is significantly lower. And the current trade in cocaine has also increased levels of violence. Organized crime has also been increasing their abilities related to the production and distribution of synthetic drugs. Amphetamine, methamphetamine, and MDMA are all three produced in Europe. And different to other drugs, Europe has emerged not only as a global consumer, but as a global supplier. In 2021, the European Commission presented the EU strategy to tackle organized crime. It's a five-year plan, and the Commission will expand funding for MPACT, the European Multidisciplinary Platform Against Criminal Threats, and upgrade the PROM framework, which allows different European law enforcement agencies to coordinate data on crime across borders. The Commission will also propose revising rules on confiscating criminal profits and modernize law enforcement to effectively tackle the digitization of organized crime in the 21st century. As a larger coordinated solution, these policies, according to us, are a step in the right direction. However, we cannot say whether certain policies being enacted earlier or more powerful policies being produced would have stopped the death of Peter R. de Vries. But it should be abundantly clear that policies that can do more are a necessity when the status quo hasn't done enough.